Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless over the last two years the fbi has investigated more than 40 cases of rail sabotage in washington state alone in one state now a lot of those attacks involve so-called shunt devices those are wires stretched between tracks that interfere with the train's electrical signals and cause derailments in one incident just before christmas in 2020 a shunt caused a train to derail in Custer, Washington. That train spilled 30,000 gallons of crude oil and forced locals to evacuate their homes. It was, objectively speaking, an act of terrorism. The interesting thing is, very often, in fact, in the majority of cases, people who commit acts of terrorism against infrastructure, whoever they are, are never punished. And the ones who are caught aren't really punished. There are an awful lot of train derailments in this country, many more than you may realize. In the last calendar year, more than a thousand trains went off the tracks in the United States. Well, how's that for a metaphor? Just today, two more trains derailed. One of them was in South Carolina and one was in Texas near Houston. The train near Houston was also carrying hazardous materials, as so many trains are. We're not even going to guess. But we can tell you that chaos is not limited to our rail system. There have also been many recent attacks on our power grid. Very few of those attacks have been widely reported. Last year, there were more than 100 attacks of them in the United States, attacks on our power grid. In North Carolina this winter, for example, nearly 50,000 people lost their power in freezing temperatures when somebody shot up two energy substations. And so on. Why is it not a big story? Oh, it's not a story at all. And then, of course, at the same time, we've also seen a series of bizarre accidents befalling the food industry, threatening our food supply. That would include unexplained fires and plane crashes and processing plants to chicken feed that seems to stop egg production. Boy, next they'll be coming for the water. Oh, wait, they are. Less than a month into the Biden administration it was also a highly sophisticated attack on the water supply outside Tampa. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Galtieri says a water treatment plant operator first noticed the remote access hack. The bad actor increased the amount of sodium hydroxide or lye in the water supply from 100 parts per million to more than 11,000. For the 15,000 residents of Oldsmar, Florida, the increase of sodium hydroxide in the water supply could have caused vomiting, chest, and abdominal pain. This type of activity and this type of hacking of critical infrastructure is not necessarily limited to just water supply systems. It can be anything. Oh, an attack on a water supply. That's weird. I didn't read that in the New York Times. But what's interesting, not to connect the dots or anything, that was not the only attack on our water supply that year. In January 2021, there was a similar effort to poison the water treatment plant that serves the San Francisco Bay Area. An unidentified hacker accessed the facility's computers remotely. According to NBC, quote, after logging in, the hacker deleted programs that the water plant used to treat drinking water. Now, fortunately, in this case, somebody noticed it. The next day, the attack was discovered and those programs were reinstalled, so nobody got poisoned, but they kept trying. There were similar hacks of water treatment facilities in California in August of 2021. There was one in Maine in July of 2021. There was one in Pennsylvania in May of 2021. In Nevada in March, in New Jersey in September of 2020, in Kansas in March of 2019, and so on. So who's looking after our water supply? Water, that's kind of basic. Well, that's the job of the EPA. In fact, they're not paying attention to such an extent that even the Washington Post, which is a shill for the administration if there ever has, was one, pointed out that, quote, for more than two decades, the EPA has not been resourced or organized to secure the nation's water and wastewater sector against physical and cyber threats. Wait a second. So nobody's paying attention to the most critical infrastructure, not the racist roads, but food, water, energy, transportation infrastructure, food, water, energy, infrastructure. What does that add up to? Oh, that adds up to a country. You can't have a country without those things. And in every single case, whatever the cause, our food, water, energy, and infrastructure are being degraded. Who knows why? Why is no one talking about this? 
Was this disaster predictable? Well, we're not sure. Netflix made a movie about it last year. A train derails in Ohio and spills toxic chemicals everywhere. Some of the locals in East Palestine were actually extras in that film. <laughs> but no one saw it coming. It never could have happened. Right. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. An unprecedented natural disaster in New Zealand's North Island. Entire towns have been cut off by flooding and landslides. Farms, houses and bridges have been washed away. Cyclone Gabriel has now passed, but the impact of the storm will be felt for weeks to come. All, all, the, all the houses were flooded up to the guttering, total devastation through the Dartmoor Road. It's all, it's all had it, so um, livelihoods lost. What, what do you say really? It's um, heartbreaking. The damage here is with the power lines is extensive and all up Eppley Road. It's just snapped in so many places. So. I think we'll be pretty cut off for a while. More than 10,000 people have been displaced and 140,000 left without power. On Tuesday, a state of emergency was declared, only the third time in New Zealand's history. The cyclone follows floods in Auckland and Northland two weeks ago, which were triggered by record-breaking rains. The government says now's the time to provide answers to climate change. On a recent February day in Central Park in New York City, you'd never have guessed it was right smack in the middle of winter. Look around, people are dressed like it's spring or summer. Wait, hold on, shorts and a t-shirt in Central Park in winter? Where is the snow? New York City averages around 75 centimeters of snow every winter. So far this year, only about one centimeter has fallen. I do miss snow. I like snow in winter. So, I mean, this is not normal winter. I feel so overdressed right now, and that's probably because I am. It's really too warm to be wearing these gloves. I certainly don't need this scarf. And I probably don't even need to be wearing this jacket right now. But it's out of habit because it's mid-February and it's supposed to be cold, but it's not. Temperatures on this day nearly 18 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees above the average temperatures this time of year. Weather is beautiful outside right now. Look at this sunshine. Crazy, right? I love it. Have you ever seen New York in February like this? Never, never before. The northeast of the United States has seen all sorts of weather records this winter. In Buffalo, about 600 kilometers from New York City, they saw more snow in December than any other winter in the past 50 years. And Boston saw record low temperatures in early February down to negative 35 degrees Celsius with wind chill, which I experienced firsthand. Oh, I can feel it on my fingertips through the gloves. Meteorologists say the extreme temperatures are caused in part by a weather pattern known as La Nina, but also something else. Climate change. As you know, the globe is warming, our winters are warming, and all weather now is taking place in an atmosphere that's fundamentally changed. It's warmer, it's more moist, and our weather is all occurring in that changed atmosphere. A new reality, perhaps, with New Yorkers first enjoying the warm weather, but now beginning to ask themselves, will it ever snow this year? Because this isn't normal. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather, and yet it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7, and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16, 21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. And turning out of the dire situation in Turkey and Syria, time is running out to find survivors more than a week after those devastating earthquakes shattered the region. This morning, the death toll surpassed 40,000, making it the worst disaster in Turkey's history. But international rescue crews aren't giving up hope despite the exhaustion and bitter cold conditions. Sadly, that death toll will continue to climb just based on what we've seen with rubble scattered across uh, the disaster region. And you can actually see the power of those two earthquakes nearly 10 days ago now, right at my feet, where the earth literally broke open when those quakes hit. But even today, there are still small miracles. This morning, clinging to hope, this 42-year-old woman carried to safety almost 10 days after the deadly earthquake. Searchers and survivors refusing to give up. At least nine people freed from the mountains of concrete and twisted metal that used to make up their homes Tuesday. These rescuers finding the outstretched hand of a 65-year-old survivor later pulled out after nearly nine days. Rescue crews digging long tunnels to reach them, many exhausted, some sleeping on piles of debris. More than 200,000 homes in Turkey were destroyed or so badly damaged they'll have to be demolished. Turkey's president saying more than 35,000 have died in this country alone. Close to the fault line, the quakes changing the landscape. This used to be a single olive grove, now separated by a deep canyon a mile and a half long. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. Turn out of the war in Ukraine because U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with his NATO counterparts in Brussels today, vowing continued support for Ukraine as the war enters a critical phase. A new intensified Russian assault is getting underway in the east, and CBS's Charlie Daggett is there. Ukrainian military vehicles charged down a village road just outside Russian held territory north of Bakhmut. Ukraine says Russia's military has been bombarding positions all across the front line, and here was no exception. 
Ukrainian soldiers told us to be quick and spread out. The sound of explosions has been nonstop, both outgoing and incoming. This is the last Ukrainian held village before the Russian front line, about three miles in that direction. They were even jumping into our trenches, trying to take them over. Ostop told us we jump into their trenches, they jump into ours. Trench warfare, close enough we were told to throw grenades at each other. Russian troops have been inching forward, but at a tremendous cost. In Bakhmut, the Ukrainian military has banned civilians and aid agencies from entering, indicating it may be about to fall to Russians. Proverbs 29.2 When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. A raucous response from Republicans this week when President Biden delivered his State of the Union address. The president put forth many proposals, including federal codification of abortion and an assault weapons ban. Republicans jeered at the president during the speech and shouted, liar. Well, here to provide some insights on the Biden administration's political and cultural agenda is Robert Spencer, director of Jihad Watch. He's author of the new book, Sumter Gambit, how the left is trying to foment a civil war. Most Americans know you as a terrorism expert, but in this case, with your new book, you focus on political and cultural terrorism. So tell us what you thought of the president's speech last night, the raucous reaction from some Republicans. What's really going on here? Well, you know, a lot is being made of the reaction of the Republicans as if it's some kind of unprecedented rudeness to the president. But it has to be understood in the context of the fact that this president is the very first in American history to declare that his principal opponent and his legitimate opposition and essentially half the electorate are outside the bounds of acceptable political discourse and are essentially traitors to the republic. And he extended that in the State of the Union address, repeating his nonsense about the January 6th so-called insurrection, the threat to our democracy that it supposedly constituted, and pushing for his radical far-left agenda that would encroach further upon the freedoms of Americans. In light of all that, I think the Republican response was actually quite muted and far less hostile than Nancy Pelosi say, tearing up the president's speech a few years ago. American colleges, universities, corporations are now spending millions of dollars on equity programs. Equity directors and executives are now commonplace in American society. So is this really class warfare, Robert? What is this push for equity and not equality, I might add? What is it all about? It's very much class warfare, Gary. It's all about trying to sow division between various groups in American society and ultimately making everyone a dependent of the all-powerful federal government. And the, the colleges and universities with their diversity, equity, and inclusion programs are working hand in hand with the government, which is quintessentially fascist, so that you have in a fascist state you have the government working with private entities in order to enforce an ideological lockstep, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. The idea is to shame Americans who have succeeded and to enforce what is frankly also a Marxist agenda of economic leveling by the confiscation of wealth, which is essentially theft, from the wealthy and its forcible redistribution to those who are not wealthy, not necessarily, and actually most in, in, in most cases, not because they have been uh, the victims of racism or something of that kind, but simply because they haven't worked and are already accustomed to the idea of being dependent upon the government. The left can does indeed control the entertainment industry, the education uh, apparatus, the government, the media. It's all one point of view and only one point of view that is acceptable. If you step out of this lockstep, then you are vilified, smeared, marginalized, demonized, and so on. As all these groups begin to try to tighten their grip and crush dissent, that Americans are waking up to it and realizing 
that we have to fight back now, not in uh, illegal or violent means, but through all peaceful ch avenues in order to protect our freedoms, which are gravely in peril. Do you believe civil war is unavoidable or can we reverse course? I believe it's very much avoidable at this point, but the left is pushing for it. For example, with the drag queens and primary schools and things like that, the idea is we either accept it, sit back and go along, in which case we've lost our children and lose our culture, or we fight back in a way that they can say, see, these people are terrorists, as the FBI classified angry parents at school board meetings protesting against all this madness as domestic terrorists. We have to continue to resist in peaceful means continue to speak out and remember that every one of us has to become an activist now. Nobody is going to do this for us. If we want to defend our freedoms, we all have to stand up. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? If his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning, my prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.